Hey guys, this is Nick, and it's time we forge ahead in our exploration of the XFC desktop. And this time we're going to talk about its default applications. Because XFC makes some bold choices there in terms of what apps it ships and what they can do. And I just wanted to reflect a little bit on that. So we're going to take a look at the various applications that XFC ships out of the box, see what's missing, and see why that might be an issue for some people. But there is one app that XFC doesn't ship out of the box, Unfortunately, because that's today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads, trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface and you can download it as a deb or an arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Okay, so let's begin with the general theme of XFC apps. They're fast, like really, really, really blazingly fast. You click on an icon, it opens instantly. You do an action, it does it instantly. This is really nice to use. You feel that the computer is not fighting you. Everything that you do just opens instantaneously, and that's amazing. Now, in terms of coherence, it's not the best desktop I've ever used, let's be honest. Some applications have title bars, some have menu bars, some have header bars. It's a bit mix and match. But for speed, it's the best. If, like Maverick, you have a need, a need for speed, then XFC is probably gonna be your top gun because all the apps are just gonna fly right onto the screen. And now that this horrible 80s colored metaphor is done, let's begin with the applications themselves. So probably the most important app on a desktop is a good file manager. XFC ships with Thunar, which is probably some kind of Old Norse word to say Thor, the god of thunder, since the app's icon is a hammer. Thunar is simple on the surface, kind of looking like Pantheon's file manager if somebody had grafted a menu bar to it. It supports tabs, of course, and lets you edit the location directly instead of using a weird keyboard shortcut to do so. I'm looking at you, Nautilus. It also lets you use a breadcrumb style path bar if you prefer. The sidebar is your average fare. It's listing places, devices, and network, but you can switch that to a tree view if that's what you prefer. View modes are limited to an icon view and a list view or a more compact list view called compact. There is no column view here. And on that note, why is Elementary OS the only desktop shipping a file manager that has the column view? The column view is amazing and it should be everywhere. Now in terms of options, Thunar is pretty complete. You can move to a single click behavior instead of the double click to open. You can tweak the icon sizes in the side pane. You can open new windows in tabs instead, along a lot of other available tweaks. Now, Thunar also comes with a bulk rename utility, which ships as a separate app instead of being directly implemented in the file manager. And it lets you, well, rename files in bulk. <laughs> what did you expect? It's still pretty handy to have out of the box, especially if you work with music files that you got in a totally legal manner, but for some reason don't have the same naming convention. So Thunar is a good file manager. It's fast, it's responsive, it's simple out of the box, but you can really customize how it looks and feels, which is pretty good. Next is the terminal. And yeah, I know I always say that a terminal isn't an absolute necessity on Linux, but some people just like to do things the old way, and for them, a terminal is a really important app. XFCE's one is named Terminal, and I can only applaud the lack of a custom name. Apps should have descriptive names, and a terminal should be called Terminal. It shouldn't be called Commander Line or Neo's Dream. It should be named Terminal. Don't use whatever pop culture reference you want to name your app. It's just not understandable by regular users. So this app supports tabs, and it lets you change the copy-paste behavior of the application with either a direct copy and paste of commands, or it can show you a dialogue to inform you that pasting whatever command any idiot will give you on the internet is a pretty bad idea. Not this idiot, though. You can trust this guy. 
So you can change the fonts, the default number of lines and columns in the terminal, use a transparent background, change the colors, and even select what will be picked up when you double click on something. So you can even tailor what text you're going to select. That's pretty cool. So once again, it's a very simple application following in the footsteps of Thunar. It's simple by default, but if you really want to make the experience your own, it's very easy to do so. Now, XFC uses an image viewer called Ristretto, because of course, a name based on a subpar beverage will tell users that it's used to view images, or not. Okay, now on that note, XFC is smart enough to call this image viewer in the title bar and add that information in the menu as well. So it was basically just an opportunity for me to be mean to coffee again. I'm sorry. Ristretto is competent. It's no photo library manager, so it doesn't have editing capabilities, but it will let you open any image blazingly fast, set it as your default wallpaper, or set a slideshow. You also get a sidebar if you opened multiple images, and you can switch from one to the next easily. In short, it's a simple image viewer, nothing bad, nothing great here, it's... it's good. XFC also ships a bunch of utilities, although some of these might have been added by Fedora instead. I mentioned previously that there was no file search in the menu, and that's because you have a dedicated utility for that, called Catfish. It doesn't seem to have a specific keyboard shortcut attributed to it though, but it is lightning fast, although its GDK3 nature doesn't seem to accord itself too well with the default theme, with menus not responding like they should on hover. Yeah, I know, it's a nitpick. You also get a basic task manager with graphs for CPU and RAM usage and a list of processes that you can kill without mercy, just like desktop icons did to my father. Now there's also a really weird thing called XF Dashboard, and I don't know if that's something XFC ships by default, or if that's something Fedora added, but it seems to be aiming to copy the GNOME 3 activities view. It feels like it's not ready yet, and I don't really know why XFC would add that by default, as they have their own desktop metaphor that isn't GNOME, but who am I to judge? You also get the usual screenshot tool, really simple, a very basic notepad that looks like, well, Microsoft's notepad, and a calculator whose name will make you sound like you have the flu. Galculator. With a G. There's also a dictionary and XF Burn, which is a CD DVD burner, which I won't spend too much time on because I don't have any CD or DVD drives that I could use to try that out. And that leaves us with a lot of missing parts. According to the official XFC projects page, XFC doesn't have an official default email client, calendar, photo library manager, media player, music player. It lacks a lot of stuff. And that's okay, because it's kind of the philosophy of XFCE here. They don't want to reinvent the wheel and create their own set of applications. They want to have a lightweight and fast modular desktop that you can replace each and every component by something that you'd prefer, so they don't feel the need to recreate applications that already exist and will work well within their desktop environment. Now, that still comes with a few problems though, because this means that XFCE will never feel like a coherent, cohesive whole, because by default, all of its apps, or most of its apps, use menu bars. Some of them use header bars, but most of them use menu bars. If you import GNOME or Elementary OS apps inside of XFCE, then you're gonna get header bars, not menu bars, so it's not gonna look right. If you import KDE applications, they're made with Qt, not GDK, so they're never gonna look native either. Which means that there is no way for XFCE, without having default applications, to have a nice and coherent look and feel across all applications. Now, some people will not care about that in the slightest, and that's okay. If you want to have a really fast, really modular desktop, and you can pick and choose every single app or module that you want to use, even if they don't act or feel the same, then XFC is a fantastic choice. But if you're like me, and you want a cohesive vision, a coherent interface with apps that look and feel the same, that look and feel like they were made by the same team, then XFC is not really going to work for you. But that's not going to stop me from keeping my exploration of XFCE. The next video will be about customization, because having that ability to remove every single module that you want and replace it by something that you prefer using is something that is really, really powerful. And I think we can achieve some pretty good results, so we're gonna take a tour, probably at the beginning of June, of most customizations that we could do and some really, really good results that I could find. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to receive more videos like this one. And if you don't really like watching my stuff on YouTube, you can also go to Odyssey. My channel is synced there. I left a link in the description below. And if you want to help me own more white shirts like this one or change the decor a little bit, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Whatever your subscription tier, you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast every Monday or Tuesday morning when I'm a bit late and also the right to vote on the next topics I cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!